in this warm weather. Okay, we're gonna stop here just for a moment and introduce myself. My name is Helen King. I'm one of the Doses of Gifts tours here. To I've got some new notes because we're changing the whatever. So I'm gonna just go by my new notes. Okay, it was in 1760s when Henry Lawrence owned this plantation plus several others along the Cooper River. But he especially liked the plantation and you can see why it's just beautiful. Um, he was an avid bot botanist, a rice growing in the low country. He was a noted statesman, a statesman and he was president of the Continental Congress from 1777 to 1778. In 1781 he fell into the hands of the British and was imprisoned for a time in the Tower of London. And then he returned here to Mepkin where he died in 1792. The plantation became the property of Henry Lewins Jr. then. Then the plantation, plantation passed after several generations and then it was sold to Henry Luce and Claire Ruth Luce. Henry Luce was the founder of Time Life Sports Illustrated magazines and his wife Claire was an author, a playwright and also the ambassador to Italy at one time under President Eisenhower. They used this plantation mostly for recreational purposes, hunting, fishing, boating, things of that sort. And they would invite their wealthy friends from the New Jersey, New York area to come down and winter with them. Um, let's see. Well, she converted to Catholicism shortly after her daughter was killed in an automobile accident. And a short time later, they both fell ill and had to move out west for health reasons. So they decided to donate this property to the Diocese of Charleston with the understanding it would be given to a religious community. And so it was given to the Trappist Cistercian Monks in Gethsemane, Kentucky, where they sent down some monks to establish this, as it is known today, Our Lady of Memkin Abbey. Okay. In over 50 years, they've surely grown strength and in spirit, and we'll see that as we go to the church this morning. We will be passing the Claire Booth Loose Library, however, it is not open to the public. But if you have a certain paper project to do for your church or your work or your school, see if someone in the store will try to get your librarian in the library to get your work completed. You said Claire Booth Loose? Claire Booth Loose. Mm -hmm. Okay, where are we at now? Uh, we will be passing the library. I said it's a very substantial building. It's built on 87 pilasters drilled down into hard clay called marl. Uh, in fact, last year when we had Hurricane Matthew here, all the monks went into the library to be safe, you know. Um, but the hurricane went by, nothing happened out there. But right here in the parking lot, there was three of these huge trees come down. Mm. Didn't hit the store, they went that way. That's good. So, I mean, you wouldn't know it because they had to repave the, uh, the uh, parking area and cut all those trees down and make it pretty again. So, um, that's good that way. Okay, uh, how the monks make their living is some items sold in the store. We have a good selection of books, music, artisan gifts, pottery. We also sell the mushrooms that they grow here, the shiitake, and the oyster. We have the fresh and the dried, so you know, your choice. Uh, they grow this here. Uh, anything you purchase in the store helps out the monks tremendously. Didn't they used to sell eggs? Mm -hmm. Until They'd... Peter stepped in. Oh. We were mistreating the chickens. I get it. <coughs> they grew their own grain here and they fed the chickens. Huh? Uh, I don't know. How do we mistreat the uh, chickens? I don't know. I don't know. Well, those are blooming right over there. I guess yeah. they get just enough sun. Oh. Hard I mean, I think it has. Just it's been down cold last week. Oh. I think it's the coldest winter. Um, yeah, the snow in the snow is terrible. It would never go along. <laughs> yeah, our friends up north were laughing about us and our a little bit of five inches of snow, oh, but yeah. the temperatures didn't go below freezing for a week. I know. And we don't have snow plows. They here. don't understand that we don't or have chains or any of that. Or salt or anything. We, we have sunscreen. Yeah. In air conditioning.
She did get some rain last night here. Yeah. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. That nice mild temperature is on Make things grow real fast. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to stop here just for a moment. That's our new retreat center. If you want to come here on retreat, that's where you'll stay. access to that also. So uh, we will probably see some retreats in, in the church today. Excuse me for a minute. Sure. Okay. I wonder about the Spanish moss. I know it can live on its own. I don't know what that type of plant is called. But I doubt seriously if they put it in all these trees. It seems like it must spread on its own somehow. I think it does. It moves with the wind. It comes off of one and goes to another. Yeah. But this is everywhere. about seven or eight years. The three kings in the back are made from old oil drums. You can see the difference in the inconsistency of the metal. Last year at our Christmas Fresh Festival, we had over 8,000 people here. Yeah. Yeah. And we sign up in October. Mark the count any time in October. Just come in and uh, register how many people's in the group and which day you want to count. <coughs> Usually between uh, the day before Thanksgiving until the first through. It works out wonderful. The first part of this building is the abbot's office. Then there's a breezeway right there. And then the back area is the refectory where the dining halls and the kitchens are back in that area. So we'll see that on the other side. We go to the bridge. Let's go this way. Are the monks here silent monks? Um. Years and years and years ago, they used to be, but they're not silent. They run a business here. They grow the mushrooms, so they have to. They, they have work. to talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they do have a period of silence, which is eight o'clock when they go to their rooms at night, until after breakfast the next morning. They do, <coughs> but afterwards they do because they have to. Yeah. Well, they get up at three. Yes. And <laughs> yes. And you drew it. Yes. Stop here just for a moment. We're going to be going out to the church in a minute. This is the bottom floor of the Clairvaux Bliss Library. There are over 75,000 volumes of monastic readings in this library. It's all climate control. The top floor is a more modern library where the internet is, and this is where they are connected with the rest of the world through the internet. They do not have televisions or radios in their private rooms. 
their private rooms, the um, there's like little cabins going this way. So the church, and there's one over there you can see. Um, that's where they actually go to sleep, you know. But everything else is right here. Their library, their church, their infirmary. I'll point that out later when we go closer to it. But everything is right here, everything they would need. Now, we're going to walk halfway down this hallway. I just want to show you a few points of interest. Be careful walking to the center because you'll sprain your ankle if you go over that way. It happened once and it wasn't, wasn't pretty. Hmm. How many monks are here? There are 13 monks right now. Um, I'm not saying that we're not going to see 13 today. Sometimes we have guests. Sometimes we have um, different organizations that come in and sit with them, whatever. But there's 13 that live here right now. And we'll see those monks when we go into the prayer service. You see the cross is on the hillside. That's where some of the monks are buried. Now when Claire Booth Luce lived here, her house was where the church is now. And uh, they wanted to use her house as a church whenever they ex got this property. And they put some money into it and tried to fix it up and use it as a church for a while. And they did, but you know, it wasn't to be. Um, when they were very wealthy people, when they would party, go home, party them, and never maintain their house as well as they should have. And the insects here in the south, it just took its toll. So they tore down her house and put a church right where her house was. Now for entertainment in those days, they had horseback riding. The horse barns were on top of that hill right there. They had tennis. There's a little grassy area down there. That was their tennis court. It's just a grassy lawn right now. And they had boating. Across this knoll is the Cooper River. And maybe you'll hear some boats today. But you can't see the river from this point. Whenever you go to the main gardens and actually go down to the Cooper River, you'll see everything. And that's called the Loose Gardens. So they were here from 1936 to 1948. this hallway. Part of the building is the abbot's office. Then we have the, where all those windows are, that's the refectory. Along the back is the infirmary. That's where the, um, if you're sick, you go to the infirmary. But if they have a doctor's appointment, they go, if they need to go to the hospital, they go to the hospital. But um, everything is right here. Papers. papers. They do that when, it's, when the weather is right for them to come out. And when they're... Just took my breath away. Okay, we're going to go into this huge branch of a live oak tree. On that live oak tree is a plant called, do you know what it is? Spanish moss? No. No. What's the fern? That's a resurrection fern. Resurrection fern. Yes. 
it's on all the trees in the south here. You never really notice it until someone points out. Now that would get dry after it dries out. It'll be in a, like all brown and you want to take it off the tree. But 30 minutes after a good rain, that will come back to life. I never knew that. That's how it got its name, Resurrection Fern. Wow. It's I pretty. Know that. Mm. We've got a live oak in our front yard. Yeah, you remember, you know, when you remember when they cut the branches off? Mm -hmm. There was some of that. Mm -hmm. We had it trimmed up last year. Yep. It's pretty when it's green, but when it's brown, it's ugly. You need to see what water. <laughs> yeah, it's water. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the bell tower before we go into the church. Uh, whenever the Mass acquired this property, they wanted to give thanks to those who helped them get this property and get them started and whatnot. And they're just thankful that they had this good piece of land here to do their prayers and services. Um, we will hear those bells before, during, and after the service today. And the first one they recognize is the Indians. They were the first people in the land here. And then the Lawrence family who lived here for a while. <laughs> they were farming on this place and it's a beautiful. I know there's blasting that they had been inside for Christmas. They must have just the perfect light here. Oh yeah, they do. Okay, you shut the door whenever you come out. Okay. I'll leave that off again. It's like walking in their yard, yeah. in their house. Yeah. It's okay, but just read the sign and do what you're supposed to do, and everything will be fine. I just, that's why I've never been, I've been with part of it, but then I did come at Christmas that time. And I was with the group. Oh, yeah. So we, we have a lot of groups at Christmas time. I have the crash store where I sell crushes only. Nativity sets from all over. And I have a special store for that here. Did you hear the dog barking? I did, and I had red dogs running around. They have a dog here. Abby's here. That's Abby. So she she just doesn't like the bell. Or she's singing with the bell. She doesn't like it. She's a resident dog here. She was a stray that came here with a broken, broke around her neck. And Abby. Hello, Abby. Well, they took her to the vet and uh, to make it So she's she allowed because she lives here. She lives here. But I'm spoiled. Are you spoiled? Mm. I bet you are. That's Abby. With at least 13 daddies and <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But you interrupted our bell. <laughs> she does it all the time. <laughs> that hurts my ears. How long has she been here? Oh, uh, three years now. Oh, it's good to go. You don't get these squirrels. Take off. She's a nice dog. Does she stay outside all the time? 
I think it has a doggy house somewhere here. How many acres is this? Here? There's 3,000 acres here. Oh my gosh, really? Yes. Wow. That seems like Approximately 100 acres are cleared for the she buildings got something. and the gardens. Yeah, she can't do anything. Oh, but she wants to. I have cats and they do that. They just stare up in the uh, trees all day. Uh, Every now and then they get something. Oh, good. Yeah, I heard the dog and I thought, well, don't people read the website? They're not supposed to bring their dog. I know. <laughs> you go ahead. Okay. Thank you. That means you have to close the gate, young man. You're hired. <laughs> he's he's um almost sixty nine. And he says every time they have a job ad on TV, like at Boeing or somewhere, uh -huh. he'll think, I could do that job. Uh -huh. And then he remembers some of his hours. There you go. But I have a daycare in the house, so he's not really retired. He gets to play surrogate grandpa all day. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I usually check for that as soon That's as I get to you anywhere. <laughs> you should check it right away. Yeah, no, no, we'll go to a restaurant somewhere. I know people are looking at me. The first thing I do when I get there is the last thing I do when I leave. Is is an intricate pattern that traces a single path from entrance to center. A labyrinth is different from a maze because it is unicursal, unicursal, made from one line. The path has no dead end branches and turns back on itself many times before finally reaching the center. The path can symbolize a journey such as a pilgrimage, a spiritual journey, or the passage through life. Labyrinths are used in a variety of religious and community traditions for meditative walking, etc. Why a labyrinth at Metkin, you might ask? Why? Some of these words I don't know. I was a straight-A student. I don't know all these words. Monks have been lovers and workers of the land since their founding in 1098. Walking a labyrinth is a great way to experience our connection with and appreciation for the natural environment. The experience of walking the labyrinth fosters the contemplative life lived at Metkin Abbey. This is the only one I see. Is this even part of it? This should be... That's just a bench. This is a thing to walk. Which I do not wish to do, I don't think. But the fireman's memorial... 
looked like it was over here. This is a labyrinth. One can walk in circles here if one wanted to. But quite something. This one does not want to. No. No. I want to find the, find the fireman's memorial. I thought that was the beginning of it. But she said there was a tree and a bench for each of the Charleston men. And this might just be a bench for people who walk the labyrinth. Although I see a bench in there. <clears throat> that's just a place to sit down when you get tired of walking on circles. Oh, that's where the bench is. Huh. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think that is. I think this is the center of the labyrinth. Yes, I think it is. I had dreams last night that there was a snake laying beside my path where I was walking and I kept passing the same snake and telling people, keep walking, keep walking with the snake. So I don't want to do this. <coughs> you may cut. Okay. Virginia oaks. The Virginia oaks flow down. Yeah. Because the live oaks don't mm -hmm. Unless it got stunned during it really good. John and the cornfields. They're very tall. Yes. Wonder if that's from vandals or just things falling. What do you mean? The the hand and then uh Oh, I didn't see that. I saw he had something on his face. on my face. <laughs> yeah, it's probably vandals. This is probably what, marble? Yeah, looks like. I don't think marble just falls off. Let's see if these benches are mm -hmm. This is interesting grass. Looks more like patches of monkey grass. Monkey grass? Oh, a cemetery. This is a trust. No, this is a cemetery. I don't know what this is. I'll get up here and read. I don't know what it is. Timothy David Simpson, Namaste. See, Namaste isn't a bad thing to say. 
Some Christian people say saying namaste is bad because you're doing yoga religion. But this says namaste. So this is the cemetery she was telling us about. Yeah, these are new grave sites. Where private people can be buried now. Yes, a bunch of magnolias. That person just died. Yep, yeah. last year. Oh yeah, that was a year ago. I keep forgetting. <coughs> now that looks like that thing you said. The monkey it's grass? Another one, stop. Another one of the sculptures. It's Mary and Jesus and Joseph pulling a donkey. That's pretty amazing from tree stumps and a chainsaw.
And these are the benches for the Charleston night. These are the trees they planted for the Charleston Nine. Just ignore that little house back there. 